So this is, um, you can see the problem here. Um, this is basically a piece that I took that Chet designed and flipped it around a little bit. Uh, his com his vertical component was actually slid over here. And he, since it's an angle, it, it wasn't just a mirror image job. I had to kind of slice it off, move it over, flip flop the support. Anyway, um, it's fully seated in the front, but I just had a heck of a time getting to slide forward. I even had to heat it up and slide it on. And eventually it wouldn't even seat any further. Obviously, this is why. So something's in there that's interfering. And honestly, most likely it's part of my kind of crummy job trying to recat it, uh, move things around. So, but I knew that it was kind of just a proof concept for me. So I wanted to see if I could get it to come up this way as opposed to overlapping this way, which is what he has. He has a sort of flip flop, which works super simply. His his design is print ready, good to go. The problem is that he noticed is that when his print bed came all the way back, um, the back few corners of it were uh, obscured by the um, by the filament uh, spool kind of open up the corner. He's, and his, his thought was, well, I almost never print in that back left corner, so it's not a big deal. And it probably isn't unless you're printing quite a few centimeters tall, just based on, um, yeah, when it hits. But um, I'm the kind of person will forget. <laughs> if I decide to actually have something back there, I don't want that to cause a problem. So I wanted to, I've been wanting to actually do a rear side spool like this to try to eliminate the excessive height um, but uh, not be all the way out the side and instead kind of redirect this way. So this is my, you know, my redesign of his thing. It's, it's not exactly the same. It's very similar. Um, you know, he, you know, I was looking to do it myself and then I saw his and I thought, what the heck, let's just try it. If it, if it ain't fixed, don't break it. No, sorry, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, um, but it, you know, it works, but you can see the lean that it has. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the cables here, but it's because it's not seated there. It's sort of leaning this way, which means that if I try to get parallel to the, to the tabletop, you can see how it's down, which means the spool almost wants to fall off, which makes me nervous. I actually put a zip tie on it just to help limit it from being able to fall off. So I redesigned the whole thing. Um, I started from scratch. I opened it up and uh, well, I, I, I opened up. Uh, Fusion 360 and just started up completely over. Took my own measurements and design. So, um, his in inspiration for sure, uh, but just kind of my design. I have not tried this in, so I'm going to pause for a second, take this apart, and go from there. Okay, so I've literally got this emerged in water that's been microwaved for a couple minutes just to sort of soften it because I could not get it down. But it's still too tight. I don't know if you can see or not. There we go. It's all the way on. And if you're wondering, is it gonna come off? I'm pretty certain it will. Um, this is actually, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. It looks like him. Um, this is actually the third time I've done it. The first time I just did enough to get it so I could get it started and I heated it up again, got about two thirds of the way on and then um, heated it up the third time and was able to get it all the way pushed on. So now let's see how it's cooled down. It's off. So um, shows me that my tolerances on the, the CAD is too tight. Uh, I actually gave it a two tenths of a millimeter offset but the measurements, actually getting the measurements of this are a little bit tricky, so um, and it's hard to see where, you know, when I line it up, it looks right, but I don't know what I messed up, something I did, so. But, in this situation, is it really that important? Is it worth changing the CAD, reprinting it, which is a two and a half hour print, when five minutes or so, sorry, I could push harder, but the last time I did, I kinda jammed myself up against there. There we go. Well, that went really far, and I don't want to push on my wire harness. Okay, well, <laughs> I got a little too far there. Um, it's weird that it's so tight now because technically it's it's all tapered, um, but I'll get a wrench and I'll just push, squeeze, and it'll get off. But anyway. Um, May it look frustrating, not the best approach, um, but it does work uh, if you need to. Um, rethinking, thinking out loud, probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to place like a um, either a C clamp or a um, 
or even like a wood clamp on here to stop it from going too far. Just clamp it on there and then push until it hit instead of getting too far. So, um, wow, it is tight. <clears throat> okay, well, I'll have to mess with that later. All right, oh, I think I know what I'm stuck on. It's debris. It's some filament. I saw that actually before I was doing this. That I didn't think it would slide that far, so it shouldn't matter, but whatever. I'll get it off. Okay, I got it off. Um, didn't take long. I actually just took a, a C clamp and put it on the end of the rail, caught the edge of it, and just turned until it budged a few millimeters. Now I can slide it back, put my end cap back on. If I die, just take the drum back. Do I have that right? Yeah, I do. And I can cinch that up against there, and there we go. So now it's just a matter of um, remounting this guy. It's, it's attached to the old one um, on top of there, and I should be good. Okay, I'm back down in my printing room. I've moved the unit down here, and so now, you know, here it is all attached. You can see that the overall width is basically non-existent uh, additional width, um, so which is pretty cool. Because when you look from over top, when you slide the, uh, the table back, from where the cable extends, it's only about an inch of additional depth, which is much easier than the additional height that it adds. Here's my um, Sierra 10 Pro. You can see the height it comes up above this rail. So that's a lot of extra height. And you might be thinking, well, what's what's it matter when you've got this other much larger printer next to it? Well, my goal is to get that down as well, relocated. But even if I can't, I wanna put a shelf up here and not have it so high that it's obnoxious, um, practically above eye level. So uh, I'm gonna try to relocate my Prusa's uh, spool as well, if possible. I'm not so optimistic about that one. But I'm going to see what I can do. Um, so that's it. So anyway, I think it worked out quite well. Uh, I think it's pretty clean. If you're wondering about the feed, it's no more bent than when coming from the top and having to make that right turn. I'm also going to make a, a, a sort of a, you know, a, a bearing based uh, wheel feed as well. But, you know, I, I, it's really not that critical at this point. I've test printed. Everything's been fine. So anyway. That's it. Um, happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and upload the files to Thingiverse. Uh, I'm going to change the offset. I'm going to make a, a larger gap so it's not so hard to get on there. Um, I also have to adjust the mount points. Uh, I didn't get that quite right. Uh, they were too close together uh, by about a millimeter. I was able to make it work just by drilling it out, but not what you want to have to do. So anyway, that's about it.